Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Roman and let's talk about vitamin D. Now this is one of these uh, interesting vitamins that we hear a lot about, but how much do we actually know about vitamin D and is it essential to take this vitamin? Well, I'm interested in knowing what the literature actually has to say, not necessarily what your neighbor or your best friend is telling you. I want to know what has been proven in a clinical trial. So with that being said, let's get started. And as with all my videos, this is for educational purposes only. Obviously, I am not providing medical advice. And I actually recommend that you find this video within my channel because I talk about vitamins. For example, how is it that we divide vitamins? But more importantly, I talk about the different clinical trials in medicine, namely the difference between an observational trial and a randomized trial. And this is important because I'm going to be talking about this in this video. So let's start off with some general details about vitamin D. Just know that vitamin D is considered a fat soluble vitamin. So we store it in our fatty tissue and our liver. Now the majority of our diet of vitamin D is obtained either of course through your diet, but also through sun exposure. So when you're out in the sun, this generates pre vitamin D levels within your body. Now the important thing here is notice I said, pre vitamin D and that's because this vitamin D has to go to the kidneys and the liver for final activation. And now the active form of vitamin D is called 125 dehydroxy vitamin D. That's important to keep in mind because of course you have to have a normal functioning liver and kidneys. Now vitamin D besides obtaining it from the sun, we also uh, obtain it through our diet, either through supplements, which you buy, for example, vitamins, or also within our foods, for example, oily fish, beef liver, and also there's a lot of different foods that are fortified with vitamin D. In other words, vitamin D is added to it, namely milk, yogurt, cheese, so a lot of dairy products, and believe it or not, a lot of orange juice contains or is fortified with vitamin D. Now, this is the most important piece of information on this slide. And that is that over 20% of the population in the United States is considered vitamin D deficient. And I have to tell you in my day-to-day -day practice patients that I'm seeing all the time, I see a lot of vitamin D deficiency. So the reason I'm bringing this up now is that I think you should consider seeing your primary care and being tested for this, because if you are vitamin D deficient, then you should definitely consider bringing up your vitamin D levels. So why is it that we should maintain normal vitamin D levels? Well, first of all, it helps maintain normal calcium levels in your body, and also it promotes bone health. And if deficient, you are at risk for developing osteopenia, which is basically pre-osteoporosis and ultimately osteoporosis. And this is when you have very weak bones. And if you fall, you're at a much higher risk for a fracture. And of course, the only way that this is diagnosed is through a DEXA scan, also known as a bone density scan. Now in children and young adults, if you are vitamin D deficient, this can also lead to what's known as either rickets or osteomalacia. So respectively, and again, these are in kids and in young adults. So that's right. A lot of people think that if you're vitamin D deficient, this will only affect you if you are an adult, but not true. Even children can develop bone health issues. Now, besides bone health, it's known that vitamin D in small amounts are required for normal immune function or immune support and muscle function as well. So those are two other important reasons to make sure your vitamin D levels are normal. And of course, if your bone health is maintained, this can reduce the risk of falls and ultimately fractures. Now, the good news is that to determine if you have a low vitamin D level, it's a very easy test. It's a simple blood test, and they will simply measure your 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels in your blood. And most experts consider a level of less than 30 nanograms per milliliter to be vitamin D deficiency. So very simple, greater than 30 normal, less than 30 low. Now moving on to replacing your vitamin D. Okay, so how is it that you can take a supplement if you buy it in your local pharmacy, for example? Well, this really depends if your goal is to maintain or if you are deficient and you want to bring up your vitamin D levels to a normal range. So let's first start off with 
normal vitamin D levels. So again, you just want to maintain. And for this, the recommended dose up to the age of one, so in babies, is 400 international units, which it's about 10 micrograms per day. Now, if you are between the ages of one to 70, the recommended dose, again, these are ballpark doses, is about 600 international units per day, which is equivalent to 15 micrograms per day. Now, in adults greater than the age of 70, the recommended dose, ballpark once again, is about 600 to 800 international units, which it's equivalent to about 15 to 20 micrograms per day. So again, this is just maintenance doses or the recommended daily allowance that you just want to maintain a normal vitamin D level. So if you had your blood test and your vitamin D is normal, wherever you fall within that your age range, that should be ballpark what dose you should be taking. Now, if you are vitamin D deficient, you have different options. For example, you can take 50,000 international units weekly times eight weeks, or you can take between 5,000 to 6,000 international units every day until your vitamin D level is greater than 30, meaning you've taken enough to have normal vitamin D levels. And now what you wanna do is maintain and try to make sure that you do not become deficient again. And usually the recommended dose is between 1,000 to 1,500 international units a day. So again, these are for deficient patients. Now, when you go to your local pharmacy, you will see that you can buy either vitamin D2 or vitamin D3. And just know in general, vitamin D2 tends to comes tends to come from plants. Okay, so it's plant sourced, whereas vitamin D3 is from animal products. Okay, and just know that in general, vitamin D3 is known to be absorbed a little bit easier. So for the most part, we recommend vitamin D3 a little more just because it tends to have a little bit better absorption. But again, vitamin D2 also does its thing and can also work for you. So how is it that so many patients are vitamin D deficient? I mean, what's the reason? Well, first of all, we're all trying to avoid the sun because of the fear of skin cancer, also because of premature aging, wrinkles. So of course, reduced sunlight exposure is one reason. Another reason is we're simply not obtaining enough vitamin D in our diet. That's obviously another reason. And a third reason would be we have reduced absorption for whatever reason. So for example, let's say you have a history of chronic pancreatitis or a history of Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis. For example, you have intestinal issues. So of course, that's going to lead to malabsorption. If you have bariatric surgery or any type of surgery within your intestinal tract, that will obviously lead to malabsorption issues. And also, believe it or not, if you are a chronic uh, steroid use patient. For example, you're one of these patients that has chronic asthma or COPD or chronic pain syndromes, and you're taking a lot of prednisone or dexamethasone. Again, these chronic steroids that patients take for whatever reason, this can also lead to vitamin D deficiency. So I was actually surprised because I did not know that when I read this. So the other uh, reason, of course, you already know that you need a fully functional liver and kidneys to activate that vitamin D. So if you have renal disease or better said advanced renal disease or liver disease, this can also re uh, reduce the amount of active vitamin D that you have in your body. Now, before we proceed, I'm constantly coming out with educational videos such as this. So if this is something you enjoy, then consider subscribing. All right, so should we be taking vitamin D? What does the data show? In other words, what does the, med the medical literature tell us? Well, first of all, we know that if you are vitamin D deficient, this can lead to osteopenia, ultimately osteoporosis, and of course, an increased risk for fractures. That's obvious that we obviously know this. Now, some observational trials have found that if you have reduced vitamin D levels, this has been linked to an increased risk of cancer, all right? But again, observational data. Now, the WHO, which is the World Health Organization, also found a possible link between reduced vitamin D levels and colon cancer. Also, other observational trials or studies have found a possible link between vitamin D deficiency and breast cancer. Now, the important thing to keep in mind here is notice that I've stated these are all observational studies or trials, is that there have been other observational trials that have not 
found such a link. So this is the reason observational trials, as I stated in my original vitamin video, is that observational trials are really good to give us an idea so we can obtain or think of a hypothesis. And then we try to prove or disprove this theory within randomized data. So the question to ask is, what does the randomized data tell us? And the good news is that we actually do have randomized data. For example, the VITAL trial, which was published in the New England Journal of Medicine back in 2018. And this was a randomized placebo-controlled trial of 25,871 patients. So again, a good number of patients comparing vitamin D at a dose of 2,000 international units per day together with omega-3, one gram a day, comparing it to placebo. And patients were treated for a median of 5.3 years. So fairly good amount of time. So the important thing here is that patients were not vitamin D deficient. So these were patients that had replete vitamin D levels. And the final result or the conclusion was that there was no benefit in the prevention of cancer or heart disease. That's right. You heard it here. Randomized data, no benefit as far as preventing cancer or heart disease. Now, they actually went back and they looked at this data again, and they did find one thing, and that is that it tend to show a, redu a reduced risk of advanced cancer in patients who had a normal body weight. So in other words, patients who had cancer or were diagnosed with cancer were found to have a lower incidence of more advanced cancer, okay? So less metastasis, if you will, in those who had normal body weight. But we have to keep in mind that the authors of this trial basically concluded that the only thing we can obtain from this is that it is hypothesis generating. Okay, so we really can't make any specific conclusion about this. It was just an observation that was made. Now, what else do we have as far as randomized data is concerned? The next trial is the VITA trial. And this is also a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial evaluating vitamin D at a dose of 100,000 international units a month compared to placebo. Patients were followed for 3.3 years. And basically, in this trial, some patients were vitamin D deficient. And the final conclusion, the same as the VITAL trial, no benefit as far as cardiovascular disease, fractures, and cancer incidence. So here you have another randomized trial coming up with the same conclusion, no benefit. All right, so what conclusions can we make after looking at the data? Well, first of all, we know that vitamin D deficiency does cause health issues. I mean, at a minimum, it will reduce your bone density, causing or predisposing you to osteopenia, osteoporosis, and a risk of fractures. Again, if you're deficient, you're at risk. So definitely, there's no doubt you should treat vitamin D deficiency. Now, supplements, if you're going to supplement, meaning you have normal vitamin D levels, you should consider supplementation at the recommended daily allowance doses. Because remember, vitamin D is fat soluble. And if you take too much vitamin D, your body really does not have a good mechanism to get rid of excess vitamin D, the same as with all lipid or fat soluble vitamins. So you're at risk for toxicity. So again, remember we went over the chart of the recommended daily allowance doses, depending your age. Now, some observational studies suggest that vitamin D may decrease the risk of cancer and heart disease. But notice that the majority of these observational trials okay, has this link if you are deficient, all right? So if you have vitamin D deficiency, there is some data out there, observational, not randomized, but suggesting a possible link between heart disease and cancer. But just know that there are also some other observational data that does not suggest this link. So it's really up to you to decide. Now, the important point here is remember the gold standard in medicine are randomized data. This is what we went over in our original vitamin video that I asked you at the beginning to, to look at. So just know that there's no randomized data proving that vitamin D prevents cancer and or cardiovascular events. Although remember, I told you they went back and they might they found that it might reduce your risk of metastasis if you have an existing cancer. But again, the actual authors of this trial only said that the conclusion is it's hypothesis generating. We really, you know, we have to take that with a grain of salt. 
So I really do hope that this helped you out. You know, I'm curious to know what you think. I mean, if you ask me, a lot of times patients ask me for any type of illness or condition or issue, what is it that I would recommend for myself? And again, I'm not giving any recommendations here, but for me, I test my vitamin D levels. If they're low, I obviously replace them. The last time I did my vitamin D, it was actually normal. So I only take a recommended daily allowance supplement. And I have to admit, I'm not too good taking pills. So I take it from time to time. But up to now, my vitamin D levels have been normal. So leave me a comment. I really want to hear what you have to say. And I'll see you on one of my other videos.